Hi and welcome to another world class edition of Johnny on the Spot. It's going to be a tough show for me to get through, I admit, because of course the Kristen Stewart Pattinson break up, but the show must go on and I'm here to entertain, inform, and inspire. Tonight I delve into the sick world of one James Holmes, suspect A in the slaughter of 12 innocent people injuring 58 in a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado, the victims of which we still mourn and pray for as we speak. First I wanted to see The Dark Knight Rises before I did this. Also wanted to let the story breathe a little bit, let it sink in, before I could give you a well-reasoned thought on this. So I saw The Dark Knight Rises in IMAX. It was a great movie, dark, violent, sometimes overtly complex in the plot, but it was very entertaining. Good job by Chris Nolan, and I wasn't going to let this red-haired punk destroy my experience. The very latest on the cowardly red-haired punk is as follows. Holmes sent a notebook to a school shrink at the University of Colorado at Denver two days before the shooting showing stick figures being shot and a written description of the upcoming attack kind of like he storyboarded a movie. Holmes may have broken up with a girlfriend before the shooting. He failed an exam at the University of Denver and dropped out of the PhD program. He had no social media presence, a complete loner, played World of Warcraft obsessively, a game involving role playing and controlling the point of view from the first person. When busted by the police, he claimed with his red hair, smoke bombs and weaponry, he was the Joker and obviously the enemy of Batman. He booby trapped his apartment, kind of like the elaborate bombing of a hospital by Heath Ledger's Joker in the Dark Knight. So like the old cliche, life imitates art, art imitates life, and a University of Colorado psychiatrist says, quote, movies desensitize us to violence just like the military does. And Hollywood actor-director Peter Bogdanovich, who had his former love, Dorothy Stratton, gunned down by an obsessed Bengali whack job named Paul Snyder, said movie violence is now pornographic. So you, like a lot of other people on this planet, spin it around wondering why? Why would a guy do that? What is his motive? What was the reason? Does it really matter? He's nuts. He's psychotic. He's got problems. He's a sociopath of the highest level. He's a certifiable loon to make it very simple and he destroyed a lot of young lives in the process. So who or what is to blame in this? First we look to the libs on the left. George Stephanopoulos claimed on air that Mr. Holmes was in the tea party. Problem there, it was a 51 year old dude, not this James Holmes. George, you might want to check your sources. Reams of articles, editorials written all over this city of Chicago, guys like Roger Ebert, all over the country, about gun control. That'll solve the problem. Guys like Holmes won't do the same. No, no it won't. Even become a part of the presidential campaign rhetoric. Look, guns are illegal in Chicago. Our murder rate is up 40%. We just had four people shot and killed last night between 4 p.m. and 4 a.m. this morning. That's a fact. 15 people were shot last weekend, three were killed. Our mayor here is more concerned about the values of Chicagoans and Chick-fil-A spreading their rhetoric in Chicago than he is about the death and the violence in Chicago. And on the other side, the other extreme, that's the conservatives, the NRA gun nuts that think we should be able to buy, buy body armor, AK-47s, automatic weapons, 5100 clip magazines. No, that should be illegal. You don't need 100 bullets, Ted Nugent, to kill a damn deer. Believe it or not, I actually do have a point here. Some people who were at the movie, the survivors of the shooting, said that they thought the smoke bombs and gun shots from Suspect A were part of The Dark Knight Rises, part of the movie. Now, now we got something. The lines have forever been blurred now between fantasy and reality. The line is so thin, it's as thin as a silicon chip in your precious iPhone, your laptop, or your iPad. So with the lines blurring, how weird is it getting? How about Christian Bale, actor, going to Aurora, Colorado, very nice of him, to go to the medical center at Aurora, Colorado, and he visits the memorial and he visits some of the victims. Very nice guy. He's a Welsh actor, Welsh accent, playing Batman. And he goes, this, this is just weird. See, Christian Bale really isn't Batman. I am. We've, we've got smartphones, every app in the world on this thing. You got Facebook, you got Twitter, you got LinkedIn, whatever you want in the world, it's right here at our fingertips. But is it making us closer as human beings or pushing us further apart? We're supposed to make you, us more connected, but the thing is, is it takes us away from actually meeting people in general. So, or out, out in public, you know, if you could see what someone's doing on Facebook your entire life, then 
So it makes us less yeah, social. Yeah, I think it, it makes us less socially connected. So obviously lots to comment on in this particular show. Why did the coward James Holmes kill? Any motive, any reason, your thoughts below. How about guns? Would gun control or prohibition, gun prohibition help? Certainly hasn't helped here in Chicago. Just ask Mayor Rahm Emanuel. This just in at showtime. Uh, just read that Jesse Jackson went to Aurora, Colorado to sport an assault weapons ban. Also Heath Ledger's family and former love Michelle Williams, who just played Marilyn Monroe, did a great job. They're upset about the focus on the joker and it should be on a gun ban so there you go a total gun ban is that going to help with such situations like this social media is it keeping us closer as human beings or pushing us further in the power comments in the comment section below thank you very much see look look at this dog this dog this dog is real here we go <laughs> That doggy is real. So life, life is about people. It's about little tiny dogs. People, precious, wonderful, irreplaceable, made in God's image. People, so here's what you're gonna do. I want you to go out tomorrow, or I want you to right now, Call somebody, tell them you love them, stop by their house, go visit, you got somebody sick, you need to visit in the house. That's how we can do this. That's how we win over crap like this. Family, important. Friends, important. Phones, iPads, not important. So that's the deal. That's why I want to be in touch with the real people out there. So go touch them. So we take the tragedy and we spin it positive. You can do it. So that's all I got. Please like and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at Johnny Vaughn. That's J-O-H-N-N-Y-V-O-N. Also, there is a link to COVA, Colorado Organization for Victims Assistance, in the underbar, also in the following credits. So I'd appreciate if you can give some money to those victims. I will do so as well. You guys have a great week. Talk to you soon.